Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Metal Episode 6, the Wrestlemania pre-show. Yes, it is just a few days away until the granddaddy of them all and things are really getting fired up. Tonight, instead of the usual pre-show atmosphere, we've prepared something a little bit different. Tonight, here from the Metal Studios, we will look over how the wrestlers have made their way to this grand stage and how their chances look at Wrestlemania. Some of these monumentous feuds trace back to even last year. However, one feud which traces back only to last February is the feud between John Cena and Kurt Angle. Yep, that's right. Cena and Angle have been at each other's throats for the past couple of weeks, trading verbal barges and also even more trading back of blows. And it's really been getting very fired up on this road to WrestleMania. It all began last February. John Cena coming fresh off of a steel cage matchup against world champion Shawn Michaels. He had called out Shawn Michaels to congratulate him and congratulate him on his victory. However, it would turn out that Shawn Michaels would not appear. Instead, it was the debuting Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle, the wrestling machine, here in No Limits Wrestling finally. And when we fought, he had patched things up and shaken the hand of John Cena. We thought it would be over then. But instead, double-crossing him and delivering the Angle Slam. Kurt Angle, at that point, sent a message to Cena that he was not going to back down easily. Then, it was Metal Episode 3. Cena comes out, trash talks Angle, thinks that Angle's going to come out, but instead, cowers away from the challenge, and in fact, Kurt Angle is not there. Kurt Angle would then, the next week, send a major message by breaking the ankle of Carlito. This continued for weeks until Cena finally had enough. This is where the point where Cena finally had enough of Angle when Angle challenged Cena to an Olympic wrestling challenge with catastrophic consequences. And here we go, they lock up and it's the first man to be pinned to the mat will lose, one, two, three and they're grappling now MMA style right now to kick off NLW, Kurt Angle now he's got a hold of the arm and look at this, using the leverage and then Kurt Angle obviously much more experienced than John Cena in this term of wrestling and you see here Kurt Angle trying to get the upper hand on Cena and look at this, almost threw him to the floor like a rag doll but has the headlock applied once again and now Cena with the headlock or is it Angle trying to take down Cena very unique style but oh look at this again look at him in high intensity right in the face of Cena of course this is going to be completely contrasted at Wrestlemania when these two face off in a No Limits Wrestling matchup this is an Olympic style matchup right here the first man to be pinned 1-2-3 to the mat will lose and you see Cena with a takedown now, first takedown of the matchup one, and now Cena, two, has he got him away? One, oh now it's Angle two. with the cover and now look at Cena, grabbing the arm Cena grabbing the arm and he's going to try and grapple Angle one, until he can grapple no more but a roll up by Angle but that was not it Cena wait, oh wait a minute, what the hell's this? Cena's got brass knucks and what's he going to do with those? oh my god right off of the skull of Angle and what the hell is this? Cena Jesus, beating the hell out of Angle, right to the skull. And what the hell is that son of a bitch doing? I'm sorry about my language, but for God's sake, Cena getting the brass knucks out. This wasn't a, oh my lord. Look at the blood flowing from the head of Angle. John Cena beating the living crap out of Angle with those brass nuts. John Cena on this occasion proved that he is not scared of a challenge and definitely not scared of Kurt Angle. It will be this Sunday at WrestleMania the Doctor of Fugonomics, John Cena, takes on the Olympic wrestling machine Kurt Angle in a one-on-one -on -one match in Angle's debut at WrestleMania. Switching our focus now to two even more talented wrestlers in Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. For the past couple of months, they have been feuding for what seems like forever. At the Royal Rumble, they were Drew 1 and 2 respectively, 
and were going very well until they were both eliminated at the same time by Alberto Del Rio. The next night on episode 13, Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho had a one-on-one -on -one contest where Chris Benoit was the victor. Offering his hand in respect, it would seem, Chris Jericho offered to shake the hand of Benoit, but instead took it upon himself to deliver a cheap slap to the face. They would continue to feud over the next few weeks when they met in the War Games matchup. However, it was after this that they faced off because of interference. Chris Benoit was in a match against Sin Cara in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup. Chris Jericho came down to ringside and cast Chris Benoit an opportunity to go to Money in the Bank at WrestleMania. The commissioner confronted Benoit backstage and banned him from the building to ensure that he would not interfere in Jericho's matchup later that night. However, he did get his hands on him next week. On episode 17, it was a number one contenders match between Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. They went one on one and even fought to a draw when the ref's hand counted the shoulders of both men 1 2 3. Alberto Del Rio was shocked, they were shocked. Nobody knew who the Intercontinental Champion was or who was going to be number one contender. So the commissioner settled those arguments when he announced a triple threat match for the title at WrestleMania. Benoit vs Jericho vs Del Rio for the Intercontinental Championship. Then a fast count when Jericho was made special referee for a match between Benoit and Del Rio. It all came to a head in the lion's den and this is what happened when Jericho and Del Rio, with a little bit of interference from Benoit, faced off inside the lion's den last week on Metal Episode 5. He's in complete control, and where do you think he's going now? He's uh, going to the side of the cage, and I don't know what the meaning of this is. Oh, uh, look what he's got here. That is a deadly weapon, and a Singapore cane shot off the skull. And that means that Jericho can lock in the walls and Del Rio is in a prone position is the Intercontinental Champion gonna be defeated by both of his com number one contenders it's looking that way at the moment but Benoit I'm sorry Del Rio using the kendo stick to get out of that one and now Del Rio gonna soften the impact or even harden the impact he goes after the arm and you gotta believe that Del Rio it's going to try and lock in that cross arm lock. Jericho's arm is hurting and Benoit is not a part of this matchup. But at the moment it doesn't even matter because Del Rio, look at this, Singapore Kane shots to the arm and is really wrenching on that arm now. Oh my goodness. There is no way he's getting out of this. Look at this. Singapore Kane using the leverage here for the cross arm lock and this has put out so many men in the past and it has just put away Chris Jericho following the Singapore Kane shots weakening that arm it was just impossible for Chris Jericho not to tap out and this match is over but Del Rio continuing to apply pressure onto the arm and this is just disgusting at this point the match is finished but Del Rio trying to send the message oh and look at this and look at who's jumped the god rail. Del Rio hasn't seen him. And there he is, Chris Benoit, the other man in this equation. This cage was designed so that Benoit would not interfere, but he's came, come out here at the conclusion of this matchup. He's on top of the cage. Dear God, what do you think is happening? Off of the cage. My God. The risk. The impact. For the love of God, Benoit taking it all in his stride and leaping off of the top of the cage. You had to believe that Benoit would interfere in this one. But it was at the end of the match. Benoit with that incredible dive off of the cage. And even last week, when Jericho and Del Rio's matchup was turned into chaos. They turned on Benoit, Jericho turned on Del Rio, proving that you cannot trust anybody in this situation. Who is going to be Intercontinental Champion come this Sunday when Jericho, Benoit and Del Rio face off in a triple threat match 
for the Intercontinental Championship. Other matches that are going on at WrestleMania are even more important as well, including the Hardcore Championship match. Kevin Nash, Big Show and Raven have been on a collision course and it was this past week when Kevin Nash sort of shot the world and won the Hardcore Championship from the Big Show from interference from Raven. After that matchup, it was announced that another triple threat matchup would be made. Kevin Nash defends the title against the Big Show and Raven in a triple threat match for the Hardcore Championship at WrestleMania. And another tag team championship is on the line too, with Hernandez and Chavo Guerrero challenging Kofi Kingston and R-Truth. This past week, another major twist in this rivalry was made when Kofi Kingston was about to face Chavo Guerrero and instead Chavo calls out Hernandez to attack the prone Kofi. Chavo Guerrero used the tag team championship belt to hit it across Kofi Kingston's skull and then they left their damage, they left their mark. Our truth came in afterwards and it looks as if that Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez have posed the biggest challenge and the biggest threat to Kofi and Truth's tag team titles that there has ever been. And another match which rides very significantly is the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania. Six men will go in and compete in the ladder match for the briefcase which guarantees a championship match anytime, any place they wish. It will be CM Punk AJ Styles, Sin Cara, Kane, Mr. Kennedy and The Miz vying for the briefcase. Five of those guys qualified fairly and they were all in the ring on episode 17 to state their claim to why they should win Money in the Bank and why they will win Money in the Bank. However, everyone was shocked when the sixth man to enter Money in the Bank was revealed on episode 17. I'm calling you out right here, right now. AJ Styles challenging The Miz and all of the other Money in the Bank competitors. Five combustible elements in the ring. All who will compete at WrestleMania. The tension is building. We've been hearing this for weeks, but is he here? I can only imagine, and there he is. He is the fan's choice, the second city saint, our savior. And he is here in No Limits Wrestling. You voted for him, and he is here in the company, CM Punk coming out here for the first time ever to an incredible crowd response CM Punk is in No Limits Wrestling he's been hyped up for weeks but he's finally here the fans choice is here and he is so happy to be here Interrupting the five guys in the already in the ring and looking out on the crowd. What a atmosphere it is here. Well, five of the six spots of money in the bank have been filled, and I think that the sixth spot in money in the bank at WrestleMania has just been taken up. CM Punk looks in the eyes of AJ and everybody else. CM Punk wants to be World Heavyweight Mr. Money in the Bank. Who is going to come away with a briefcase on Sunday? Will it be AJ Styles, CM Punk, Sin Cara, The Miz, Mr. Kennedy or Kane? One of them will win the match, win the ladder match and earn a championship match any time they choose.
part one of WrestleMania begins the 10th of May. It is so close and it has been months in the making. It has been building since October when the Royal Rumble began. However, one of the rivalries on the card began all the way back in August. It was at Uprising that Randy Orton and Batista were two of the six guys in the Elimination Chamber for the World Heavyweight Championship. Batista, after entering the chamber, took it upon himself to spear Randy Orton straight through one of the pods. It looked as if Orton's chances of winning the matchup were over, when instead, a bloody mess of Randy Orton came out and RKO Batista to eliminate him. This didn't sit well with Batista whatsoever, so what he did, after being eliminated, entered the cage with a steel chair, wiping out all of the chamber participants, including Randy Orton. He gave Randy Orton the Batista bomb, meaning that Randy Orton was eventually pinned by Cena and eliminated from the matchup. That would mean Randy Orton's dream was cast, but the animal didn't stop there. The next night on episode 11, when Randy Orton was about to make his way to the ring, a sneak attack from behind, Batista grabbing Orton and throwing him off of the stage to the floor below. Against all odds, Randy Orton came back fighting the next week and got a victory over Mr. Kennedy. However, once again, Batista from behind, a sneak attack, and ended up this time spearing him through the barricade. All of these attacks were on Orton's mind when he entered the Royal Rumble and took it upon himself to beat the hell out of Batista. That would mean that he would eventually eliminate Batista. However, this is what happened when Batista got back into the mix and tried to eliminate Orton. And look at Batista, he's eyeing up Randy Orton. It's Orton going over, but instead Batista does, but he hangs on to the apron. Batista, lucky escape there. He hangs on to the apron. But Randy Orton with an RKO and Batista's gone. The animal is gone and you cannot believe it. You, you see those eyes. That's how much this means to him. And now we're down to the final five. Sting, The Undertaker, Triple H, Mr. Kennedy and Randy Orton. Which one of these five is going to wrestle me? Wait a minute, what the hell is this? Batista are back in. Randy Orton is... Randy Orton's eliminated and... Oh, no. Now Batista cannot let go. Continuing to beat up Randy Orton and those eyes, those psychotic eyes. Oh, my goodness, he's busted his eye open. He's probably broken his nose and what a spear. This is disgusting. Batista, a jealous fit of rage, beating up Randy Orton for the fourth time. The fourth time, and a spinebuster to the outside. Batista cannot let go of the fact that Randy Orton cast in the world title. So he ends Randy Orton's dream once again. And it's disgusting, quite frankly. Following a confrontation on episode 13 after the Royal Rumble, Randy Orton and Batista were announced as the team captains in the first ever War Games matchup at Retribution. On that occasion, after Rey Mysterio had been thrown off of the cage, Big Show had been handcuffed to the ropes and Chris Benoit had been locked out of the cage, which left Randy Orton a bloody mess in the middle of the ring and prone to the attack of Team Batista. Batista decimated Orton, but Orton was determined to fight back. After a series of attacks, and attacks on each other, they finally confronted each other on episode 17 and the match was made for Wrestlemania. A street fight where the loser will leave NLW. And after this past week, when Randy Orton kicked Batista in the skull, this dark evil side of him are emerging in recent weeks. How will that play a factor in that matchup and how is going to be Batista's condition on Sunday? when they face off in the street fight where the loser must leave No Limits Wrestling. High stakes matchup there and another high stakes matchup is this one. It has been described as the match of the decade, the match of the century, the dream matchup, the matchup nobody thought they'd ever see but it's happening for the first time ever here in No Limits Wrestling. The Undertaker 
versus Sting. Sting and The Undertaker have been on a collision course ever since the Royal Rumble. It was at the Royal Rumble where Sting made his miraculous return to in-ring competition and lasted in the Royal Rumble until the final three when he was finally eliminated by The Undertaker. Sting wasn't too happy with this, got The Undertaker and threw him over the steel steps and threw him back into the ring. We didn't see Sting for a few weeks, however, his job was not done. After weeks of being inactive, Sting finally returned at Retribution. The lights went out, and Undertaker was unconscious. Triple H took advantage of this and won their matchup. However, it was revealed later that Sting was the one behind the attacks. The next episode, Sting had a few choice words to say to the dead man. We go way back, don't we? Way back. When I look back over the last 10 years and I think to myself, how many times lure me in and then stab me in the back? We have ourselves a very unique situation tonight because I have a lot of respect for you. You single-handedly put the stinger on the map. You made me what I am. You made me what I am at this very moment. You are definitely... Hold on, just let me say my piece. So the unique situation is because deep down inside I really do respect you I do because it's so unique and I feel that way about him I'm gonna give you the chance to leave peacefully and gracefully well, that's a very audacious statement to make and the fans not happy with the cocky aura that Sting is for the last presenting. 10 years I have been waiting. I have been waiting patiently. You have been in power. And a lot of others around here have been in power. And 10 years ago, Lex and I were driving down the road saying, when are we going to have the ball and when are we going to have a chance to run with it? Well, we're ready to run with the ball. Yes, believe me, we'll all be a lot better off. It might take some time just trying to deal with this. He speaks very clearly, and I'm absolutely positive. I heard the say last week, next week, Stinger, I'm gonna kick your <laughs> Well, I'm the Stinger, and I'm back in black. <laughs> With all due respect, just don't let your mouth override your butt. I want a rematch. I will do anything. Look at me. I said anything for a rematch. And I want an answer tonight. Sting was a man on a mission then, and he's a man on a mission now. At WrestleMania for the first time ever, the icon Sting takes on the dead man, The Undertaker. We saw this past week on episode 19, at which the lengths that Sting will go to manipulate the mind of The Undertaker to get into his head. We saw the tricks being played, the dummy falling from the ceiling, the way that Sting was stood atop the Titan Tron, and then attacking Undertaker and hitting him with his own tombstone pile driver. I cannot wait to see that one. It is going to be one hell of a matchup. Very personal there. But then we go on to the main event. The World Championship is always the center of attention, whether or not the wrestlers involved like each other or not. But this case, it was a little bit different. Triple H made a return to No Limits Wrestling at the Royal Rumble. And at the time, people were happy to see him. However, when the dust settles, everybody realized that Triple H wasn't the same man as they remember. 
he'd become back more vicious, more deadly, and that was evidenced when Shawn Michaels won the World Heavyweight Championship. In the weeks prior to Shawn Michaels winning the title, Triple H and Shawn Michaels had been teaming as D-Generation X against Cena and The Undertaker. However, once the dust settled, Triple H showed his true colours and in a DX reunion on episode 16, pedigreed Shawn Michaels in the middle of the ring. Triple H said that he wasn't happy with the way Shawn Michaels treated him over the past few years and that led to the matchup being made for the World Championship at WrestleMania. The Royal Rumble winner taking on the Heartbreak Kid this Sunday for the World Heavyweight Championship. While Triple H was in the ring explaining his actions on episode 17, Shawn Michaels took it upon himself to call him out and issue the challenge and attack the game. You can put your pride aside. You can say screw pride. And you can walk down to this ring and you can accept your role. You can accept your disabilities. You can accept being my manager. And I'm no doubt that there's no way that Shawn Michaels is going to tolerate that. And he is about to come out here and respond to the comments made by the game. Shawn Michaels, this is the first time we've seen him since he was pedigreed in the middle of the ring by his former best friend Triple H. And there he is, the NLW World Heavyweight Champion, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania will defend that title against that man, Triple H. But for now, he's got to deal with the fact that Triple H can accept the fact that Shawn Michaels is still wrestling. You remember years ago that nagging back injury that Shawn Michaels had, but he manages to come back and better than ever. However, Triple H can't seem to accept that. Shawn Michaels is still wrestling and he's our world champion. And Triple H, the jealousy and the animosity towards him. And two of the, oh, wait a minute. Well, it didn't take long. No words from Shawn Michaels, just actions. The crowd is going ballistic and they are fighting out here. The game, the showstopper, beating each other up as Michaels gives him the takedown. And this is not a matchup, this is an unsanctioned fight. The game now unloading heavy shots onto the Shawn Michaels, onto our champion. And now the game. Oh, and now he's reversed. This is not a matchup, this is an early WrestleMania, a brawl. Shawn Michaels is beating the hell out of Triple H. And now, Triple H is getting exactly what he deserves. Shawn Michaels looks at him, and oh, a clothesline by the game. Triple H clotheslines Shawn Michaels, and this is one hell of a brawl to close out NLW as he's thrown over the top. HBK had him scouted, and if they're going at it like this tonight, imagine what it's going to be like at WrestleMania. It's going to be ten times worse. HBK now over the top rope crossbody dive onto the game Triple H Shawn Michaels taunting to the crowd and oh wait a minute what the hell is Triple H doing now he's got that world title belt in hand and delivers it off of the skull of Shawn Michaels the world title belt shot to the face and the game closed on him onto the announce table my god the table didn't break didn't give way and what the hell is going through his mind but HBK reversed his Triple H into those steps. The game. Is he going to be put in his place? He's just about got to his feet. But sweet chin music. Silences the game. And he is knocked out cold. A callous Shawn Michaels turned up this evening. Not the regular Shawn Michaels. The pissed off Shawn Michaels. That is the man who just beat up Triple H. That is the guy who's going to face Triple H at WrestleMania for that title. And since last week, Shawn Michaels has had a lot to think about. And all he's thinking about is defending that title and defeating Triple H at WrestleMania. Unfortunately, after having his head driven through a car window, Shawn Michaels not in the best position heading into WrestleMania on the 10th of May of this Saturday. This is the final match card you'll see for WrestleMania. 
the UFC. It is for the Hardcore Championship. In a triple threat match, Kevin Nash defends his newly won title against both Raven and The Big Show. Triple threat, Hardcore Rules at WrestleMania. Charlo Guerrero and Hernandez are posing possibly the biggest threat to Kofi Kingston and our truths tag team championship reign that there has ever been. Charlo Guerrero and Hernandez set to take on Kofi Kingston and our truth for the NLW tag team titles, the titles that have been won by them since August. This another triple threat match between three of the best wrestlers in the company. Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho and Alberto Del Rio set to lock horns at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship. In a triple threat match, we've seen how these guys cannot trust anybody. How will that play out Sunday? The winner of this matchup gets a World Heavyweight Championship match anytime they choose. CM Punk, Kane, Mr. Kennedy, AJ Styles, Sin Cara and The Miz battle for the briefcase in the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania. This one has been brewing for months. The Olympic gold medalist takes on the Dr. Thugonomics, John Cena. Both these men have been trading verbal blows, but they will trade literal blows and physical blows when they face off at WrestleMania when styles clash. This one is all about pride and dignity. The loser of this matchup will leave No Limits Wrestling. Randy Orton takes on Batista in a street fight where the loser must leave No Limits Wrestling. And after Batista was kicked in the skull, you gotta wonder what his condition is heading into Sunday. And there's this one, what's been described as the main event for some, the match of the decade, the match of the century, The Undertaker versus Sting. Sting, this past week, showed that he can play mind games as well as The Undertaker and they will face off for the first time ever in No Limits Wrestling at Wrestlemania. This is for the World Heavyweight Championship. Shawn Michaels, how is he feeling after having his head driven through a car window at the hands of Triple H? Former DX teammates set to collide at Wrestlemania for the World Heavyweight Championship, the game versus HBK. Well, that seems to be all the time we've got for now. Thank you for watching the WrestleMania pre-show and we hope that you can enjoy WrestleMania when it comes your way beginning this Saturday the 10th of May. Thank you for watching.